have your own studio. Yep, have my own studio. Like Dave. Mm -hmm. You brought some pictures uh, associated with the competition, and yeah. if if I feel like I show those pictures, and we'll get these two men to sure. sort of tell us what the pictures are of. Um, th this is one of our uh, teammates, uh, Daniel, and he was competing in the fifty-year-old division, Com and right now he's competing in kata. Kata is. Um, Free range moves very similar to a gymnastics floor exercise. Each move is done strong and hard, um, and uh, it's in a flowing motion. And you are you're graded on balance, you're graded on technique, you're graded on uh, focus, speed, power. It's pretty much like a gymnastics floor exercise. This picture is of uh, Sensei J in a in a sparring match. Um, this was his first round match, I believe, right? Right. This picture is of Karen Butler. She's uh, another one of our black belts on the team. And she's right now competing in long weapons. And in long weapons, you have the option of using a bow staff or another weapon called an ekku, which kind of looks like a paddle. This is actually, I, now we know who this is. This girl on the right, you can't see real well, but this is uh, Rachel Byram. We call her Charlie. Uh, she's our little uh, she's our little tiger in our dojo. She's very talented, and she's doing fighting in uh, in in this event here. Uh, here is uh, Dan Daniel again competing in uh, fight. He's on the right, and uh, he's competing in the intermediate division which is the brown belt division this is uh on your left is shauna byram uh, rachel we saw just while her older sister and they've both been at this school for probably about seven eight years they both are black belts um and she is competing and fighting and she actually won a medal i think a bronze there i believe in fighting um, this is me at the uh, International World Tournament. Uh, this is when I won my gold medal for short weapons. Um, s standing on the podium, I'm in the middle. To my left is, to my right, <coughs> sorry, is one of my, who is from Pennsylvania, and the person on your right, my left, is a competitor from Slovenia. This to me was really, really pretty good because they actually went out, had a flag, Played the anthem Olympic, and to me that's kind of touching because uh, I'm very much a patriotic guy. Uh, this next picture is after I competed and got my medals, and after the medal ceremony, and uh, me and Sensei Jay standing up against the wall, letting everybody get pictures. Of Great. Next, this picture is of my dad, uh, Alan Pritchett, competing in weapons. He's doing the Psi competing in the advanced division, advanced black belt division. Did your dad win it? He did. He actually right. won a gold medal in he this division. He won a gold, and he also won a, did he get a, sil a bronze there? I believe so. I believe he got a gold and a bronze. This is also a valley. That's, you must have a, a metal cabinet at your home to put your medals. <laughs> yeah, we about have to have our own little room for <laughs> medals and trophies and stuff now. <laughs> Jay, tell me, how in the world did you get interested in karate to begin with, or is this something that you've <laughs> always liked from... When did that go so far back? <laughs> you don't remember. <laughs> 1972, and at the time, a young gentleman, his name was John Wagarak, moved from uh, Maryland down here, and he was about my age, young guy. And back then, it wasn't a lot of karate, but Bruce Lee had come out, and there was some karate schools popping up. Everybody was getting on that bandwagon, but uh, we was from Concord. There wasn't a lot going on in Concord. Um, and John and me, John moved to the area, and we got to become friends, and he was a brown belt in karate, and he was looking for a school and couldn't really find one. So he said, why don't me and you start working at it, and I'll teach you. And it started from there. And John was my teacher for about a year, year and a half or so, and we would go to his school in Merlin that he grew up in, and uh, we would go up out three or four times a year and train, 
And then later down the road, I had different teachers, but since uh, mid-1970s, I, I got uh, introduced uh, to my instructor and my best friend, Kenny Williams, who was there in Lynchburg, um, and I've been with him ever since. Since then, a lot of things have changed, and we got tied into, in the early 80s, we got tied into a group directly into Okinawa, Japan. And so I've been to Okinawa and trained, planning to go back this year, I hope, uh, and the Okinawans come and train us here. I trained four or five weeks ago with some of the Okinawans. Um, that's a totally different experience. It's a great experience. Um, so that's just kind of how I got started. So you've got a great background in passing along your knowledge to these kids that you're, you're teaching. I do my best. Enjoy doing it. It's, uh, it's good when you can do something that you really enjoy. Tell me, what, what age should a parent start thinking if, uh, about a child yeah. starting taking karate? Different people have different ideas on this. At my school, we take five years old and up. Uh, a lot of schools would take them three and four years old. Uh, a lot of the schools that do that, what they actually do, they bring them in. They, they have a good program, but they're not learning a lot of karate, but they're learning to follow directions, and they're playing little games here. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I choose to take them at five years old. When they come into our school, we, we start teaching them right aid karate techniques, but not in effect that we let them know that uh, we don't bring them in and teach them that karate is fighting. We teach them respect and we teach them the karate techniques and they pick pads and they, they do techniques with each other. Uh, and then as they get older and more mature, they actually get to go do competitions and stuff like that. But it's very important when someone's looking at it's very important for a parent to look for a good instructor and someone that's going to teach values to their kid right. and not just kick, fight, and punch. Uh, because I, I teach this to my kids all the time. Um, it's kind of like a, a lot of people remember the old Karate Kid movie and Miyagi Sensei and that saying, I don't ever want to fight, but if I have to fight, I want to win. And that's very true, but fighting never, any violence never takes, uh, that's the worst way to go. Right because they will always be there unless you can work it out. So you always try to do everything you can to work it out. Then if you don't have any choice, then you won't be prepared to win. But we make sure we teach the kids the right way. So this, this teaches restraint and a certain amount of ability. Yes, uh, very and, much. And using your head before your fist. Very much. You know, I think that's, that's a, a very yeah. good thing. Sometimes yeah. that's hard to do. I'm sure. But you have <laughs> to, you will learn that in your karate, but you have to learn different things because um, you just have to learn how to conduct yourself. And you have to understand it doesn't matter what that, say, that guy says or what that lady says, that's not important. Right. You, have to, you have to have a good character and you have to just overlook things. You ever too old Never to take too karate old. lessons? Never too old. Let me, let me tell you there's a good friend of mine that's in the, uh, the association we're in from Okinawa. Uh, his name is uh, Dr. Chris Estes. David knows him very well. He's an oral surgeon in North Carolina. He's a very good friend of mine. I met him through karate. You, you meet so many fantastic people. He's an orthopedic surgeon, which right off lets you know he's a very intelligent person. Right. He's also a seventh degree black belt in Okinawan karate, which is easy to attain. Um, but we had a conversation probably six months ago, and he said that karate is, you're never too old to do karate, you might have to do it, uh, as you get older, you have to do it a different way, a different way. But the thing is this, 